In the last video, we talked a little bit about the new tool that was added, Kraken 2, that can be used to assess contamination and also about assessing the GC content of your sample to potentially identify aberrations within the data. So I've made some uh, test data here by basically combining the FASTQ files from the streptococcus pneumonia isolate we were working with in the last example with a random isolate that I downloaded from SRA. I actually didn't even look at, to see what it was. But basically you can concatenate these files and when you're running your analysis, you <clears throat> can treat these as if they, were the, they came from the same run. And what I'm doing here is simulating what possibly a mixed sample would look like when you were doing the analysis and how you could pick up on that in, in the, the uh, quality control steps and whether you need to eliminate one sample or, or a couple samples from your analysis. So I have uh, my input fast cues, contaminated one, two, run through our pipeline. We see here the Kraken 2 report. So we can take a look at the raw data. And if I were going through this, I necessarily wouldn't see anything out of the normal when I was clicking on just the raw data. However, when we go to the report and click on this, uh, we'll see that it doesn't look quite the same as uh, what our previous example did in uh, video number nine. The terabacteria has a lot more reads assigned to it. it we would expect for streptococcus pneumonia that is uh, if I can go through this, the genus Streptococcus, the family Streptococciaceae, uh, it's a lactobacillus and bacilli, firmicutes, and why I forget the next table, the table above that. But this distribution here is a, a little bit different from what we saw in the previous video. And when we go look at the pie chart, it will uh, look even more evident. So let's go on the Corona pie chart, click on that. And if you remember from the last video, when we looked at this region right here, it was basically all genus Streptococci uh, and species Streptococcus pneumoniae with specific strains. And here we see a lot of other samples that are within it. And here we can actually see that a number of reads are assigned to the gamma proteobacteria, uh, enterobacteriaceae, and then uh, the genus uh, Klebsiella. So something is certainly not right within the sample. Uh, we shouldn't have multiple uh, genera that are present within our data, and especially not if we see uh, species level identification. So after you see this, the next thing that you can look at is the output from uh, multi-QC. So if we uh, look at the assessment from multi-QC, which again, takes the output from FASTQC and combines it for the forward and reverse read. This can be done on a number of samples altogether so that you can do this across an entire data set that you're working with. And we're gonna scroll down to what I think is the most important figure here, and that is the per sequence GC content. And if you can recall from our last example that just had streptococcus pneumoniae, then we saw this GC content of 40, around 40, and uh, it was this nice peak within 40. Here we see that that peak is shifted a little bit to the right. And the biggest thing that jumps out is this secondary peak that's, uh, that secondary peak that's right here. And this should not be here. Basically, that's telling me that we have uh, something else that's present in the raw data that is contaminating our sample. And again, this can happen if you're picking colonies on a plate and accidentally grab something else, or if you think you're grabbing one thing and you're actually picking another. And I've seen this happen on a couple times. Uh, one instance was with uh, contaminated uh, media. And so when you were growing things to do genomic DNA isolations, you didn't know there was some other bacteria there that contaminated the sample. So now this is a dead giveaway when you looked at those two uh, steps between the report from Kraken in that pie chart, and now here where we see the secondary peak around a GC content of 60, that's something that shouldn't be there. Now there's a, a couple of things we can check at. If you remember, uh, and this is a good example of looking at antibiotic resistance data, if you remember from our last example, the strep pneumo strain we were working with, I think only had tetracycline resistance that was identified. If we click on Abricate, which is our antibiotic susceptibility 
uh, typing based on the genotypic data, we now see a bunch of uh, other uh, genes that were hit within the within the sample based on the de novo assemblies. And if we scroll over, this is what the uh, this is what the output looks like. So you'll see the gene, the antibiotic resistance gene, uh, the coverage, and then the percent identity, and a little bit of a uh, information about what that is. So we can see here that there's uh, corn fenicol resistant, jetamycin, tobramycin resistant, trimethoprim sulfa resistant, streptomycin, superfloxacin, streptomycin, just a bunch of stuff that you wouldn't necessarily expect within a single streptococcus pneumonia strain. So I think what I actually picked up here was uh, carbapenem resistant enterobacteriaceae, most likely Klebsiella pneumoniae, and we're seeing all the resistance that's associated with that. A couple other things that you can check if you're assessing the possible contamination or even just general aberrations within your data in general. Uh, on a previous one, I, I on a video I showed just looking at your assembly. So we can click on uh, the FASTA file and well, we can't we can't see it here, but we let's see we click it. So we can see right here there's 261 sequences. In this case, that means there's 261 contigs. And that should be a red flag if we're usually doing these analysis and expecting our assemblies to be anywhere from uh, 30 on a good day to maybe 70 on a not so great day. Uh, then when we see something like 261 contigs within our assembly, there's something really wrong there. So we can go on and check one more thing. If we go up and look at our PROCA analysis, which is basically the annotation of this de novo assembly, and we look at the output file, which is this text file we see here, 211 contigs. And now we see something here that's uh, a dead giveaway that something's wrong. The total bases in this assembled genome based on 211 contigs is 737,000 base pair. And uh, that we're expecting two megabases with, uh, with streptococcus pneumonia, and we're seeing uh, three times that here. So. That, that's definitely a red flag, especially now when we go to the CDSs and there's 7,000 coding sequences that have been annotated within this uh, within this database. So if you, you add it up, uh, two megabases for strep pneumo, probably about five megabases for strep to, for Klebsiella pneumoniae, and we have uh, two genomes basically within our analysis here. So that is uh, overall just an example of how you can use these two newly added tools, the multi-QC report, as well as the Kraken 2 analysis to assess contamination. Or even if you're doing metagenomic data analysis, you can modify this workflow to just do Kraken 2 and Corona to look at the distribution of species that are within your metagenomic sample that you sequenced. Again, it's always a great idea to go through and look at the output from uh, from PROCA and take a look at the number of contigs, the total bases in your genome and your CDSs. And what I'll usually do is for an analysis that I'm really serious about that I'm plan on publishing the data from, I'll have a uh, one main table that includes the number of reads, the total bases in the reads, the idealized coverage, whether it be uh, 20 to 50 X coverage uh, based on whatever genome you're sequencing. Then I'll add to that the number of contigs in the assembly, the total bases of the genome, the number of CDSs that are analyzed. And with all those data together, you can start looking at it to see which ones are falling outside the normal ranges. And you set up uh, some flags when you're analyzing the data to say if I find something that's, let's say, 30% larger or 30% smaller than the total genome size that I'm expecting, we're going to kick that out and either resequence it or throw that and that, that isolate out from the from the analysis. So those are great quality control tools you can do to uh, make sure that the data that you're analyzing what you expect it and it won't uh, affect your downstream results. Hope this is helpful and uh, we'll pick up with some later videos uh, shortly.